We'll call the uh, Thursday, February the 1st, Ascension Parish Council meeting to order. Uh, please rise. What we're going to do uh, tonight, as most of you know, uh, the parish has experienced the loss of one of our soldiers, Ryan Chisholm, who was killed in Iraq. Uh, uh, he will be buried tomorrow. I would ask that the citizens uh, respectfully uh, uh, remember him uh, in your prayers. Um, and his family. Uh, there will be a procession, as I understand it, that will uh, that will uh, proceed through Gonzales, and they're asking if you want to pay tribute to him to line the streets. And we ask you to do that, please. What I'd like to do right now is to ask that you we have a moment of silence. And we're going to ask Ms. Uh, Fondo she'll lead us in a word of prayer and uh, pledge allegiance. Ms. Fondo. Father, we do come before you tonight, and we do honor you, and we do give you praise. <clears throat> Father, this community is grieving tonight at the loss of one of our own who has been fighting across the land. Father, many men and women have gone before him for, to pay the price for the freedom that we enjoy today. Let us remember that and always hold it sacred to our heart that there is a price that is paid for us. And Father, tonight we want to remember the parents and the, the loved ones, the sisters and brothers and nieces and nephews and all those, Father God, who were close to this young man. And remind this family that he died a hero, that his parish and his citizens that he fought for are grateful. And Father, we just want to remember him tonight as that unique ind individual who gave his life for his country. We ask that the Holy Spirit bring peace and comfort to all who loved him and all who have known him. And at the same time tonight, we remember those that are still abroad fighting in this war. We ask you, Father, to keep them safe and to bring them home quickly and to bring peace to our land once again. And we ask all these things as we always do in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. To the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Yeah, let me, let me correct uh, one thing, Parish President, just remind me, the funeral is Saturday, not tomorrow. Today is Thursday night, and uh, this is on tape, so um, hopefully we won't get anybody confused, but it is Saturday. Uh, we'll move on now to roll call. Um, Mr. Todd Lambert is absent with excuse. All other council members are present along with the Parish President. This time we'll move to agenda item number three, chair's additions. We do have one item that I need two-thirds on. I'd ask... Uh, Mr. Babin, Mr. Babin. Okay, Mr. Babin has uh, on the agenda uh, Margaret Arsenal versus Ascension Parish. Mr. Babin, you have a uh, Margaret Arsenal versus Ascension Parish. We need to put that on as a two-thirds. Is this going to be an executive session, open session? Executive. It'll be an executive session. So we'll need a so two-thirds. So move, Mr. Move by. Uh, Mr. Barriger, second by Ms. Fontenot, uh, that we put uh, on the agenda, Margaret Arsenault versus Ascension Parish, and that will be an executive session, and we'll put that as 18A at the end of the meeting. All right. Agenda item number four, the uh, public comment period. Anybody wanting to make uh, public comments on any of our uh, agenda items, please check in with our secretary, and please note and sign in the agenda item you'd like to speak on. We're moving out of presentations. Uh, we do not have any presentations that I know of. Agenda item number six, Parish President's Report, the Bicentennial Report. Parish President. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Before we get into the Bicentennial Report, I just want to remind everybody that the district livestock show involving about seven parishes is taking place uh, at the Ascension Parish Lamar Dixon facility today, tomorrow, and Saturday. So we want to encourage our citizens to attend that. We have young people there from around the area. 
what I've done, and we'll try to do this once a month between now and the festival, on 20th, 21st, and 22nd, is to give you a brief update so all of you can stay in the loop on what the Bicentennial Executive Committee and Commission is doing. And they will keep it short, but they're here tonight to make that presentation. Thank you, President, uh, Parish President Hughes and Chairman George Valentine. Uh, we just want to give you, you can look in your books. I'm just going to kind of walk you through them. Uh, the first section is the festival overview. I won't go through all of these things. As you can see, it's quite an undertaking. This lists pretty much the things that we're working on right now. Uh, our money seems to be coming in better than we had hoped, so we may actually even add some things that are not on here. We're looking at possibly adding a choir and some other things, so we're excited about where we are in that regard. The memo is, uh, explains how the, uh, the checks and the payments and everything are deposited, the, the chain that it goes through, so you can read that at your leisure. I won't take up your time tonight going through that. Um, Sherry will talk to you a little bit about the trade and uh, the other updates with that. If you look in your binder, you're going to see a trade VIK update from Nancy, who is one of the is our uh, sponsorship fundraiser. Um, and, and again, I won't go through that with you. Uh, you can see what we've already traded, and um, we have many trades pending. The next pages just kind of go through the volunteer areas, and the volunteers are going to be one of the components that make or break our fair. So volunteers, as with everything we do in the parish in terms of uh, programming, is, is vital. Um, and Suzanne Patterson is one of our chair people, along with Monty Bonin and Judy Petit. Petit. I didn't want to mispronounce. So you can see all of those areas, and we would uh, ask that you solicit volunteers. You can see that they will be... Uh, the lifeline of our festival. If you look at the uh, the second to last page, we've kind of given you a photograph of what the stage will look like at Lamar Dixon and a little con a summary of the nightly spectacle spectacle in the sky. The final page is a map, and um, you can see that that's an ongoing in development as well. As we add programs out there and add exhibits, this map will change as well. Uh, we have a picture uh, uh, that starts with our sculpture. This is the first rendering, and we just kind of wanted to pass that along. Uh, that's pretty much all I have from the Bicentennial Committee. Um, we have the budget in the, uh, in the packet. I think if you, I'm not sure, it's after, um, I think it's after that memo letter uh, or the trade updates. It's got blue lines going through it, and I'll briefly go over that with you to sort of clear up some uh, questions that were given to us. We contracted with a, a company out of Baton Rouge called Stage Right Productions to produce this festival. They are going to be paid $70,800 for, and that's going to include all of the expenses for the setup and take down everything that's connected with the festival. All of the lighting, uh, you can see the list. It's on, under, uh, under the income section and down under projected expenses. It breaks out all of the expenses. This company contracted with Lynn Holdridge and Nancy Carter, so we are not paying anybody except Stage Right Productions. And I'll tell you, we've been working with them now for over six months. I cannot tell you the number of trips that Buddy Berry, the owner of Stage Right Production, has made to Gonzales. He practically lives in our area now. Uh, I think he's doing a great job, and we are very pleased with where we're going with this whole thing at, at this time. One of our main objectives that we told uh, Stage Right Productions was that we were going to have this at Lamar Dixon. We did not and would not let Lamar Dixon lose any money. So we will not, right now, I don't think we're going to have any problem in seeing that Lamar Dixon does not lose money. And in fact, I think we'll be able to pay them a little bit of a dividend when this is all over with. Um, we, uh, if you have any questions about the budget, 
Um, I'd be happy to answer them for you uh, as best I can. Uh, this is a lot of material, and I think you probably will want to look at it, and then maybe, and we'll update you with the budget every time we come. We plan to come back at the beginning of March, unless you want to see us sooner, and at the beginning of April to update you on everything. If you have any questions, you can call me or you can call Sherry, and we'll be happy to answer them for you. Uh, after you look at this, this is a lot of material to digest, and we don't want to take up your time with having you go through all of this. But any time you have questions, please give us a call. We'd be more than happy to talk to you about any questions you have, and we will be back at the first meeting in April, probably right here in Donisonville, unless you call us back. Do you have any questions? We'd be happy to entertain them. Any councilmen have any questions of Ms. Robert or Ms. Kenshin? I realize this is a fast overview. That's but, all right. You know. It was very good. <laughs> thank, thank you, ladies. You. Thank you, Ms. Betty. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Sherry. The only other thing, uh, Mr. Chairman, and I uh, didn't get on the report. I was just talking to the Mayor of Sorrento, and I know George and I talked about this, and he's talked to the Mayor. There's been a lot of confusion and <laughs> things going around the community concerning the Ascension Civic Center. I just want all the council to know and everyone to know that the school board never did exercise the option within that contract, nine-day written notice, I've never received anything, no one has, and so there's been a lot of discussion. They were certainly looking at some things, but there's never been anything given to the parish to where they were stating and they were uh, exercising the option in there to get out of that contract. So just want to clarify that so everybody knows the situation there. <coughs> uh, thank you very much, Mr. Okay. Chairman. Thank you. I also spoke with um, President uh, Ed Price of the school board today, and uh, certainly uh, the article in the paper, and there are some things that we'll have to work out uh, dealing with uh, some of the things that we'll mention as far as the recreation uh, facility. As most of you know, we, it's a 16-section land. Uh, the building, uh, naturally, we have it leased along with some property, but there is a, a, a map that goes along with it. Mr. Diaz is, is hunting that up to make sure that we know exactly what we have as far as leased on that property, and we'll get with that a little later. I think it'll, I think it'll be on the agenda. Uh, for the uh, Recreation Committee uh, at the next meeting. Thank you, Parish President. Thank you, Mr. All right, uh, tonight uh, we'll go to agenda item number seven, the consent agenda, uh, which is to ad adopt the uh, regular council meetings of January 11th, 2007. Motion. Motion by uh, Councilman Thompson. Second. Second by Councilman Savoy. Any discussion? So moved. Any objection? So moved. Agenda item number eight, the Utilities Committee, Chairman Jared Barriga. No report, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Berger. Agenda item number nine, the Personnel Committee. Chairman Savoy. We didn't have a meeting, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Savoy. Um, Mr. Oliver Joseph, uh, Recreation Committee. Agenda item number 10, Mr. Joseph. Yes, Mr. Chairman, we do have a report for the new year. This was our first meeting of the new year, and we had a uh, real good meeting. Uh, we got a report from the West Essential Recreation uh, um, Committee. And their um, report was good. They redid all the parks on the west side, the Modest, uh, Aben, and Lemonville. And uh, they did a nice PowerPoint report. And once again, they did a terrific job with all three of those parks on the west side. I commend them again. And one thing they uh, pointed out, they needed some volunteers to start overviewing watching those parks uh, in their community. And uh, once again, we're going to encourage the people on the west side to go to the parks. They are kept up real good, and we encourage people to go out there more often. Uh, also in that report, we had um, our report from Ms. Uh, Kincher from the uh, east side, recreation uh, director of that. And uh, one of the report was um, looking at uh, the insurance policies, rewriting those insurance policies. And um, she gave us an update on all the parks on the other side, and it was a good report. Um, she also has gave us a report on the uh, BMX and skateboard park that uh, we're looking at the site with uh, SJ, SJB. will be giving a report to us next recreation meeting. And uh, we also made a motion on, uh, on the school board and the uh, Sorrento uh, center that you just discussed and we will be uh, that motion is to discuss with the school board on that okay and, uh, that's what i'll report thank you councilman uh, joseph 
Uh, agenda item number 11, the Transportation Committee. Councilwoman Fontenot. Thank you, Councilman Valentine. Uh, we did not meet this past uh, week. Uh, the next scheduled meeting is February the 13th at 6.30 or immediately following the Utility Committee meeting. Uh, we ask that anybody wishing to attend uh, to come, and, come out and join us or they can watch us on Channel 21 on Cox or ETL. Uh, those meetings are live. We, uh, the road project updates information, we have nothing new to report at this time since we didn't have a meeting. So that concludes my report. Drive safely. Thank you, Councilman Fontenot. We'll move to the uh, agenda item Valentine. number. I'm sorry. Councilman Thompson. Yes. <clears throat> I, would like, I would like an update on uh, where we at on the right of way on Worthy Road and also the relocation on the second phase of Woodrow Road in uh, hard copy. Okay. Well, we'll um, that will be put. You, you can. Uh, I'll make sure that that gets put on the agenda for the next uh, transportation. Next transportation. Meeting. Welcome to. Tuesday. Next transportation meeting will be next Tuesday. We'll make sure that's on the agenda, Mr. Well, it's the 13th, not next Tuesday. I'm sorry. It's but 13th. the 13th. Uh -huh. okay. My request is also a hard copy, Mr. Valentine. Yes, we'll Thank get you. that to you. Okay. We'll move on to agenda item number 13, the Finance Committee, Chairman Barriga. Anything, Mr. Berger? Uh No report, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Which we did also I'm skip sorry, 12. Chair. I'm sorry. The uh, Strategic Planning Committee, agenda item number 12, Mr. Shakespeare. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, we did meet last month, and uh, basically we received a, a very uh, positive update on uh, grants by Mr. Paul Keller. Uh, he's going to come back this, this month and give us an in-depth uh, written report so that uh, people can see what we're doing in the grants area. Uh, we also had uh, general discussions and input into proposed drainage, junk car, and burden ordinances. These are ordinances that have been talked about for the last year or so. We want to make sure no matter how long it takes, we get them right. Uh, uh, so we've gone back and revisited, uh, gotten input, and we're going to bring that to uh, Mr. Babin, and he's going to rewrite it and give it out to everyone. And then we'll bring those forward again at the next meeting. Uh, for further input and and ready to move on as soon as possible. Thank you, Councilman uh, Shakespeare. Councilman Savoy. Yeah, Mr. Shakespeare, could you, uh, in your report as far as Mr. Keller uh, giving an update on the grants, can you forward a list of the grants that Mr. Keller is working on? To the he uh, he is going to give uh, an in-depth uh, written report to. All the, the the committee and all the councilmen at the next meeting, so we will have every at the strategic planning meeting. So we will have all of that then, and I can make sure he gives it to all the councilmen. Okay, thank you. All right. Let me remind all the councilmen that the, the business is going to be conducted in the committee meeting. So make sure you make those uh, committee meetings, or at least at least make sure that your items that you want information are directed to the chairman of that particular committee. Okay, we've already taken up the finance committee, which they did not meet. We'll move on to the general business, agenda item number 14, building condemnation proceeding for property located at 14533 Oak Meadow Street in Ascension Parish. Mr. Laverne Bourgeois, our chief building inspector. Mr. Bourgeois. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and members of the council and President Hughes. I'd like to have before you a uh, condemnation. Well, actually, it's, it's a uh, dangerous building condemnation ordinance. And then that is, is addresses... Uh, the address at 14533 Oak Meadow Street. I have in your package descriptions of the properties and pictures to go along and a, a brief uh, sequence of events leading up to the tonight's event uh, coming to you to ask you for a guidance on the uh, procedure that we go next and I recommend that we have this trailer removed. Motion to proceed, Mr. Chairman. Second. Motion by Chairman, I mean, excuse me, motion by Councilman Barriga to proceed. Second by Councilman Shakespeare. Discussion. Any objection? So moved. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. You have your orders, Mr. Byrne. We'll move now to planning and zoning recommendations. Mr. Lance Brock, zoning official. Uh, agenda item number 15 is the Spanish Moss Development Conceptional Plan. Plan unit development of HUD located on the north side of North. Robert Wilson Road, approximately 300 feet east of, east of West Robert Wilson Road. This is for review only. 
in item number 16 is uh, review only as a non-conforming use to amend section 17-135 to add the word non-conforming to the ordinance. Any questions on either one of those uh, for review, please uh, get with uh, Mr. Lance Brock. Move now to the introduction of ordinances. Agenda item number 17. Introduction of an ordinance to amend the Ascension Parish zoning map from medium intensity residential to mixed use for lot 1D of the James E. Gore property for Ray Shakes Niner, located on the southwest corner of Louisiana Highway 431 and Stephen Road. Um, Councilman Byrugger, I believe at the last meeting, asked that or uh, proposed to be handled before this council. It was actually submitted to the Planning Commission, denied as MU. I think there was going to be, you guys uh, fashioned a compromise where it's going to be rezoned Crossroads Commercial. The ordinance before you is MU as it was originally presented to the, to the Planning Commission. <coughs> if you want to change that to um, CC, then you can do it. You can admit, you can introduce it, and we can handle it after the public hearing right. and make that amendment. I want to call it to your attention. That amendment will have to be made before it is finally adopted prior to you, um, or prior to adoption to effect um, Mr. Byregger's recommendation of CC. Motion introduced, Mr. Chairman. Oh, one moment, Mr. Barry, please. You would. Questions, I'm going to give the, give the council just a second to read over this, and then we're going to take questions on this. Just a second, okay? Mr. Babin, would you approach the mic again, please? I'd like another explanation of exactly what we're talking about. There has been some controversy dealing with this because I've been asked several questions on whether we actually could do what we did. So explain the planning the commission. The planning commission denied denied the request based on an M a mixed use, Correct. rezoning it to a mixed use. My understanding is that this council would have no problem with rezoning it to Crossroads Commercial, as the ordinance is presented to you is the way it was presented to the planning commission as mixed use. They recommend that it be that the rezoning be denied. We did not want to change from the from the, from the line that started with with the planning commission up to you. We didn't want to change documents. To change this needs an affirmative amendment by you, which probably the most proper place to do it would be after your public hearing. Then you can change it to Crossroads Commercial. I just wanted to make sure you understood. If you read this, it says MU and that you may want it to Crossroads Commercial. Do you have the authority to do that? Yes, you do. You can, you can accept what the Planning Commission did, do not all, uh, reverse what the Planning Commission did, or amend it as you see fit. So you have the power and authority to do so. I just want to let you know it wasn't done in this document yet. This is still the same line that came from the Planning Commission. That's correct. In other words, we did not accept the Planning and Zoners recommendation. Uh, we essentially um, accepted what the planning and zoning, well, actually how the ordinance was written. For it to be changed, what Mr. Barragher had suggested, uh, it would have to be amended at the public hearing. That's what you said. That is okay. correct. Mr. Right. Mr. Right. Right. Yes, sir. Could I shed some light, please? <clears throat> Surely. Actually, Mr. Lambert, that's, this is Mr. Lambert's district, and he tried to change it before we accepted or denied planning and zoning's recommendation. And, and at that time, he wouldn't allow that. So I made the motion to deny plans on his recommendation so Mr. Lambert could possibly change it in the future. And and that's what Mr. Babin's talking that's about. But it has Mr. To be. Mr. Lambert may want to offer an amendment or well not an amendment, crossroad commercial instead of mixed use at the time of the public hearing. Okay. All right. I just so want I to clarify that. that. I mean just the So <laughs> technically people we have to introduce the ordinance as is. Correct. Yes. Just sir. like it is. Councilman Fontenot, question. This, at this time, we're trying to introduce the ordinance. This will be just an introduction. Yeah. That's correct. I kind of thought the last time that we had recommended that it go back to planning and zoning. No. Nope. No? 
that was a discussion, but that's not the procedure. The procedure, what we did was actually vote. There was some discussion. We actually voted not to accept planning and zoning's recommendation, which meant it went forward as is. And that's what this is. We will still go forward as the ordinance is written. It can be amended uh, when we go to rule on the ordinance at the public hearing, after the public hearing. But that's what Mr. Mr. Right. Bannon said. Let me get this straight. Now, if, if I want to go with the planning and zoning's recommendation, I'm trying to figure out exactly how I need to vote on this. Okay. The, the, the correct way, if you do not agree <clears throat> with this going forward or even being amended, then you would vote against the introduction of the ordinance. Tonight. Well, my problem is I'm not sure how the planning and zoning would feel about the new, the new things. So it, it, it's not. It's I not, don't have enough information. Right, I understand, but it's not for us to decide how they would feel. It would be for you to decide whether you want this ordinance to go forward as is. Okay. Okay. All right, uh, Mr. Helen's back. Uh, the question I have is were the signs posted in the local area to notify all the residents of the proposed change? Were they, they, were they posted as? Mixed use when they posted as crossroads commercial. I mean, the property was posted to to say that there was a consideration to rezone the property. Uh, the advertising and the the paperwork or the notification went out as mixed use. The same request that was that in front of you today, yes, sir. You understand? In other words, at no time during the planning zoning meeting was it brought up that this property. Wanted to be a commercial uh, cross oh, commercial. Correct. That's right. It went through the planning zoning just like it is. That's the correct. The question did not arise until after it came out. Okay. So, uh, Mr. Lambert brought well, Mr. Lambert's not here tonight. Right. That's not put, I had some conversation with Mr. Lambert today. He has a totally different idea about the situation now. Yeah. So, you might want to just wait on Mr. putting words in Mr. Lambert's mouth. <clears throat> okay. All right. So, I have before me here an introduction of an ordinance. Uh, I have read it. Do I have a motion to introduce it? Motion. Motion by Mr. Barrett to introduce. Do I have a second? Motion fails for a lack of a second. The ordinance is not introduced. We'll move to agenda item number 18. Introduction of our ordinance to revoke the public servitude shown on that certain track or parcel of land designated as lot H1-B-1 as shown on the map entitled Map Showing Revocation of a 15-Foot Servitude on the lot H-1-B-1, being a portion of Ashland Industrial Park LLC property located in Section 1, T-10-S, R-2-E, Southeast Land District, Ascension Parish, Louisiana, for Superstar Holdings, LLC. Motion, Motion by Mr. Savoy introduces Second. the one. Second by Councilman Hillensback. Any discussion? Any opposition? The ordinance is introduced. General item number eight, eighteen A. It will be an executive session to deal with Margaret Arsenault versus Ascension Motion Parish. Motion by Councilman uh, Thompson, second by Councilman Savoy. We will adjourn into the re uh, meeting to the to the left here for executive session. Mr. Babin, you you request anybody in the executive session other than yourself? Okay, thank you. Stand adjourned. Motion to go back into regular session, Mr. Beck. Mr. Hillensbeck has moved that we go back into a regular session, second by Mr. Shake Snyder. Consider ourselves back in the regular session. We were uh, briefed and advised on the uh, case aforementioned uh, uh, before we the executive session by our uh, attorney, Mr. Babin, and uh, he is proceeding with that uh, case at the present time. Motion adjourned, Mr. Chairman. Moved by Mr. Barringer to adjourn. Second by Mr. Savoy. The parish council stands in adjournment.